So what I've run into here on this job, I've actually was sent out to do um, tear up the old vinyl, put underlaying it down, and replace it with new vinyl. And right off the bat, I felt some soft spots in the floor, but I didn't know the extent of the damage until I was able to get the vinyl up, which I do now. So I want to show you guys how I take care of stuff like that, and I'll show you show you the the mess there. We got this. Oops. We got this all along this one wall here, and I'm sure that it is. I don't know, actually, probably from the window because right there is a window, and the majority of it is right by the window. But you can see that this is like all bucked up and gapped open. And this right here is to the point of it's about to fall through. I can't even put my weight on that or that's going to fall through. And all the way down this wall has just been rotted. So uh, what I did instead of I could have came 24 inches over. And just split my plywood in half, but I wanted to get as far this way as I could to get rid of as much as this as possible while I was uh, while I was at it. So if you can see my line there, that's the line I'm going to go by. Everything to the left of that line is going to be brand new plywood. We're not going to go back with the cheap particle board. We're going to put us a nice plywood down. And then we will go over it with underlayment and carry on with our installation process. You can't necessarily go get supplies or anything yet until you get the stuff tore up. Then you can see what you're going to need. So I'm going to get all this tore out, get it ready to go, and see what all I am going to need to repair it back. Then I'll make a trip to the lumber store and get me some product and come back and do the repair. me know that I am getting cut all the way through so what I got it 5 8 is good enough I might I might actually go just a tad deeper just to be on the safe side for the swelled up parts I'll probably go between 5 8 and 3 quarters just to be on the safe side start my cut over and carry on all the way to the other end is what I'm going to do so now I have my line cut all the way across the room there that's completely cut and freed up so to where my skill saw would not reach all the way to the edge right here is as far as I can get I still got maybe four or five inches of cut there I will take this and finish up my cut like so and just make my cut just like that Using this same tool, I'm going to make my cuts, like I said, around the edges of the walls. That way I can get a nice clean cut up and next to the edge. I can even lean it under. That way I'm not, instead of that, it's still straight off and there might be a chance of bumping something. I want to lean it inward. That way I'm completely underneath the wall with my cut off product.
I'm just going to carry on that all the way around the room, get all this tore out, and then I'll know exactly what I need to need, uh, what kind of material I'll need to uh, replace this and fix it back right so I can carry on with my installation. Okay, so now that I got it cut all the way around the wall, I don't know if you can see that or not. See this? It's like that. It's cut all the way around the wall. I wasn't too careful. That's not very high. That's only like three quarters of an inch high. But either way, I wasn't too careful with that because we are putting baseboard back down. But we are ready to start tearing some stuff up now. So what I want to do is start... Right here in this soft spot. What I got what I got to demo with is two hammers and a shimo lifter, okay? So first thing, this is already a soft spot. I don't want to try to start over here and let's see. I don't want to try to start right here on the crack and lift up and stuff like that because that's just gonna damage the wood that I want to keep so I'm going to start over here in a soft spot and um, start tearing up from there and then work my way over here to the seam but first I don't want to like I said I don't want to start here I'm going to start in the soft spot to uncover a rattlesnake so I'm always a little bit cautious when I do this here in the desert. Perfect um, right here is a floor joist, so that's going to be perfect. Now what I can do right here, since there is a floor joist there, I can take my pry bar and get underneath of it and start prying it loose. Most of the time they're, they are glued down to the joists, so there is a bit of cleanup. The, uh, to the joists before you can actually put your new board back down. But we'll get into that later. Okay. So now that we're over far enough to um, 
to get a good hold on this. We're over here past the joists. We got this raised up real good. It should be a piece of cake now. The only thing you want to do whenever you're pulling out big pieces is don't tear the wall up because this big piece is going to come up. You're going to damage the wall and all that stuff if you're not careful, okay? So just take extra careful doing this. Another joist, which is a seam in the plywood here, actually. This is where they joined the two, so this is going to be a nice little breaking spot here for me to separate this. Follow me. Now, you want to be careful about where you place this and stuff. See, you got these staples that they fasten the floor down with. You don't want to place them where you're going to be stepping on them. Right? See those big old long staples there? So you want to place them where you're, they're not going to be stepped on by you or the customer. And uh, So, now, as you can see, um, this one big board, you can see that it came up nicely by the edge of the wall there we don't have anything sticking out from the wall bins I cut it like I did so and we got we got a nice start on the demo here so I'm gonna carry on and get back with you later so now that I have all of this tore up I got, I got every bit of my demo part done now comes the cleanup time so what i was talking about earlier you definitely want let's see here see these uh this is a staple you want to take and get all that out you don't want anything hindering your um, new floor from going down whenever you've done it okay so take and get all the staples all the extra plywood or particle board I want to get oh, mercy I want to get everything out so these boards are nice and smooth ouch there we go Okay, let me get that one out of the way, it's giving me a fit. Okay. Alright, so let me get this one. Alright, now that we got that bit done, I'm just showing you this and then I'm going to carry on off of camera. You want to take, as you can still see, there's still a bunch of wood stuff like that here we want to get this looking like that nice and clean so I'm gonna take my chisel and just start chiseling away here I'm gonna start scraping chiseling I want to get it as clean as possible and um, I have learned from doing this before um, as you can see there is debris on the insulation and stuff like that and your best bet is just to pick out what you can with your hands because 
if you try to vacuum that stuff out you're just going to vacuum out your insulation and my opinion I would rather have the insulation I mean I would rather have the little bit of garbage there than to suck out the insulation so anyway I'm going to go ahead and get all these joists cleaned up and ready to go for my new plywood Looks good. So I'm just now leaving the job site to go get some supplies and a lot of people will measure or whatever the thickness of the board and what you want to make sure that you do measure where it's not swell this board part right here is in perfect shape uh, rather than measure because it is a manufactured home I'm just going to take this piece with me inside the Home Depot and compare it to whatever else they got and make sure it is the exact same thickness as this as what I get that's cut straight off you can see this board is like twisted in that way so none of them straight even though I'm, I took my measurements and got them accurate and stuff like that some of them I'm just having to pound in there and stuff where the boards are twisted but anyway uh, what I'm doing is putting some braces in all along the wall and that way there's something back here for this for when I put my floor down, there's something here. So if there was nothing there, this would dip in between the joists here and here. So I want something solid here so that the floor don't dip like that. And I got this one as close as I could get in there with my drill and then naturally I had to stagger the next one out. Be buttoned on another. If I, if I put one here right at parallel, I would be hitting screws. I would be hitting these screws and be hitting these screws. So you have to stagger them, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm running about two and a half inches is as close as I can get, and then about uh, five and a half inches on my next one. So that's not too bad. Uh, five and a half inches away from the wall, I don't think you're going to have much play up and down or whatever like that. So a joist hanger. This is a joist hanger. You got your hole here, hole there. For our, this actually screws into there. This hole right here is this. You put a screw right into this. And these are actually to tap it in to hold it in position. If I'm not using it on this side just because if, if they was all the same, I could... Uh, if I was using 2x6s rather than 2x4s, I could go ahead and just put all my joists down there, I mean all my brackets, and then throw my joists in there. But these are 2x4s and these are 2x6s. I'm kind of working them together. So this is what I'm doing. I am just setting them in there like so. 
I gotta be on this side because of the light. Okay, so we have now all of our joists uh, supports in, and as you can see, they were so all different, I had to number them, I cut them all at number one, number two, I got this one backwards, so the number three is on the other side, but anyway, number four, five, just showing you that they was all different 
and I failed to mention what these were actually called just in case anyone wants to know these are called joist joist hangers which uh, they got them for 2x10s, 2x8s, 2x6s, 2x4s, maybe even 2x12s, I don't know. But anyway, that's what these are called, okay? And for this particular project, I used the 2x4 um, joist hangers because I was filling in with 2x4. Because as you can see, the insulation is here and it already got mashed down that much. So just to keep from destroying the insulation and leaving it. You can see that goes all the way down there. That's a two by six. So I didn't want to completely compress it is why I used two by fours. And I'm actually fixing to do some bracing on this part. Let's see. On this part here. And once I get to that area, I'll show you how I take care of that because anyway, I'll just show you that. centered so I'm going to take some of this this is what this is actually for subfloor and I'm just going to give me a little bit it ain't got to be nothing crazy or nothing just to keep it from squeaking or anything like that I'm going to put this down under there and I want to point something out right here um, if you'll notice right here on each end I don't have a it's not a perfect fit. See that? I got about a half inch there. I done that so I'm not sitting and fighting with trying to get these in there because they were so bowed up and I had to beat some of those in because I was trying to get them tight. This don't matter because all my strength is going to be coming from here. It's not going to be attached here whatsoever. I think this coming from here. So I got my mark, my halfway mark, halfway mark. I'm going to take and just hold my hand, sorry, I'm going to put it under, and I'm going to pull that all the way down. Put that second in here. I'm going to hold it tight so it don't push. You see that pull up there? Now that's all nice and tight. These are all digging in real good. Okay, we'll do that a little bit, a little bit more. I'll do one more, that way you can see it again. I'm going, again, I got my halfway mark. So I just want to put a little bit of adhesive down there. Ain't got to be nothing crazy. And maybe if we get on the other side this time, we'll be able to see. Okay, because I gotta get my right on my left hand underneath there to hold up on that. So I'll definitely be itching after this job. So I'm trying to get my marks. I ain't gonna be perfect. You know, we're not building cabinets or nothing, so it don't have to be perfect. I just want pressure under it. So that it don't pull down. I mean, so that it'll pull tight on the floor there. And, come on now. See, 
so we got adhesive squeezed out. That's good. And again, the purpose of this is like this seam right here. See this seam in the subfloor right here? It falls on a joist. Anytime you have a seam in a subfloor, it always needs to be on a joist. Well, Ben's, I cut that bad spot out right there. There was no joist running crossways. They only run one direction in a home. So that's the purpose of these. See that? That's good and solid. I might even come back and put one or two more here or there in. But anyway, this, this is going to give, when I put my next piece down here, it'll be screwed to this and it'll be screwed to this. So whenever it's stepped on, there'll be no shifting, no moving, or nothing like that. So that's the purpose of these. And um, I'm going to go ahead and carry these on carry on with these right here and when I get to my next section we'll uh, pick back up. Okay. So right here I messed up. If you'll take a look right here how deep I got that screw. Um, cut some of the paper back. Um, anyway that screw it's probably more than halfway through the subfloor. So that's why I went right here close to it and put another one in, okay? So that, because that is more than halfway through or halfway through, it weakens it by half, okay? You only want to sink, only want to sink your heads. All this is going to be sanded after I get done anyway, so anyway, you only want to sink your heads. You don't want to sink it halfway through because you lose half your strength if you sink it halfway through, okay? Just wanted to point that out. That way people was not driving them like way down in there. So, if you'll notice, I marked all of my joists. Um, that way I know where I can run up with the screws. Just so measure from one end to the other. And on this mark, um, I'm not going to get it all screwed off tonight, but we got the gist of it. Won't take that long, but it's getting kind of late, and I don't want to be here disturbing these people too late. So we're going to just get a couple screws to hold it, and then we're going to call it a night. And if you're doing one screwing, definitely get you one of those sleeves. They are lifesaver. Putting underliner over this tomorrow as was intended when I first got here this morning. I was going to underlay the bottom ground and be done today. Um, and then when I pulled that up, I seen all this rotten stuff. So I just want to show you guys how we take care of a rotten floor in case you guys ever come in uh, across it just as I did get to the job and you think, oh wow, it's all jacked up. I can't do it. Well, um, you can't do it. So I just showed you how. If you uh, help the life, I hope you learn something. Um, actually, whenever I get here in the morning, I will be back at these screws out. I, I've done this just, just uh, to make it secure overnight. I will back these screws out, put me some uh, glue on each one of those joists, and then screw it down, okay? That is definitely a necessity to keep it from squeaking and stuff. But I got it good enough to walk on to where it's not going to be an issue overnight for these folks. So that was my main goal. That's why I only put just a few nails in it, okay? So I hope that helped someone out. And if you learned something, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, appreciate it, or anything, hit the subscribe button. Like and share it to your friends if they come across something like this. Maybe they can uh, say, ooh, that was cool. I mean, I bet I can do that now since I learned it, since I've seen that done. It's not really that difficult. All I did was a skill saw. This little deal and a drill. And that's all you need. Okay?